back, ladies and gentlemen. We are continuing our process through Unit 1. Our big focus right now is going to be on three key topics here. We're going to talk about accuracy, we're going to talk about precision, and we're also going to talk about percent error. And it's a very common misconception that accuracy and precision mean the same thing. You'll find out in this video that they are two very different concepts. So with the learning targets today, hopefully you will be able to differentiate between accuracy and precision and then do some calculations with percent error and calculate for the accuracy of a value and understand what that actually means in regards to data analysis. We'll be doing a lot of percent error calculations in lab this year, so hopefully it'll make sense to you and hopefully you'll understand. We've got some key vocabulary terms here that include accuracy, precision, and percent error, basically the three things we're going to talk about today. So accuracy is the closeness of measurements to the correct value. So think like the price is right. Closest to the actual retail price wins. So if we have multiple measurements that are close to an actual value, so for example, let's say we're doing an experiment, and the value that we should get is 30 grams, and we get 29.5 grams, 29.7 grams, and 30.1 grams. All of those are very close to the correct value. So as a result, we would say that our data is accurate. Think of like a football player. Think of a, a NFL quarterback and continually hits the same spot, the same receiver over and over again. We would say that he is very accurate in his throwing ability. Now precision is how close the sets are to each other. So precision and accuracy are two different things. Accuracy is how close they are to the actual value. Precision is how close they are to each other. So for example, if a quarterback, let's say he, uh, let's go, let's switch it up to baseball. Let's say a baseball pitcher throws multiple fastballs, but they're all outside of the plate. They're all to the left of the batter. Um, to where he can't get them. We would say that he's precise because he's hitting the same location multiple times, but we would not say that he is accurate because he's not hitting the strike zone. So as a result, we would say those are precise. Precision is how close the values are to each other. Accuracy is how close they are to the target. So for example, we can have accuracy and precision. We can have all we have combinations of accuracy and precision. So for example, we look at that first bullseye here. That is an example of low accuracy and low precision. None of the data points are very close to the target and nor are they close to each other. The one on the top right here has a low accuracy because none of the data points are near the target, but high precision because they're close to one another. The one on the bottom left here has high accuracy because if we took an average of all of those locations, it'd probably be right there in the center of the target. But we'd say they have a low precision because they're not very close to each other. And the one on the bottom right here says that we have high accuracy and high precision. All of those are close to the target and all of them are close to each other. So make sure you understand the difference there. Accuracy is how close we are to the actual value or target and precision is how close they are to each other. Now percent error is a mathematical way to determine the accuracy of a set of data. So we're hoping that the percent error is zero. The less error that we have, the better. And so in order to determine this, we look at the experimental value, we subtract the actual value, divide by the actual, that's my cat, I apologize. We start with the experimental value, okay, okay. We start with the experimental value, we subtract the actual value, divide by the actual value, and then we multiply that by 100 and we get our percent error. Now, the experimental value is what you would get in performing some type of experiment. The actual value is what you should get based on, all right. In order to calculate the percent error, we will take the experimental value, which is what you would get in an experiment, subtract the actual value, which is what you should get, divide by the actual value, and then multiply that by 100, and you'd get the percent error. You also may notice that this is always a positive value. If you take a look in the upper right-hand corner, the uh, calculation is done with the absolute value sign, indicating that percent error is always a positive value. Are you trying to get in the video? Wow. 
Yeah, I know you are not having it right now, and I am not having it either. I am trying to conduct a lesson, and you're not being very productive. Go get some food. So keep in mind that percent error is always going to be a positive value because it is in those absolute value brackets. You'll see what I mean here in just a moment. So let's take a look at sample problem number one. A student measures the mass and volume of a substance and calculates the density to be 3.40 grams over milliliters. The correct or actual value is 3.60 grams per milliliter. What is the percent error for the experiment? Well, again, all you do is you just plug the values in and then you solve mathematically. So remember the percent error is the experimental value subtracted uh, remember that percent error is the experimental value. We will subtract the actual value, divide by the actual value, and multiply by 100. So when we calculate percent error, 3.40 grams per milliliter minus 3.60 grams per milliliter divided by 3.6 grams per milliliter times 100, you're actually going to get negative 5.56 percent error, but remember it's always a positive value. So we end up with 5.56 percent error error. Simple enough. So let's move on and do an actual problem together. All right, so let's take a look at sample problem number two. What is the percent error for a mass measurement of 17.7 grams given that the correct value is 19.8 grams? Well, if you remember our formula, that percent yield is equal to the experimental value minus the actual value divided by the actual value times 100. Okay, So we just simply plug in our numbers. So we've got the questions asking for percent error. We have a measurement of 17.7 and the correct value is 19.8. So the correct value is your actual and this is your experimental. So we just plug in. Our percent yield is equal to 17.7 grams minus 19.8 grams divided by 19.8 grams. We multiply that by 100. So now all you do, you just plug it into your calculator and solve. And so what we get, our rough answer, negative. 10.6%. Now remember, it has to be an absolute value, so this always has to be positive. So our percent error is actually 10.6%, and we'll put error after it, okay? So it's a pretty simple, pretty straightforward calculation. Just plug in and solve. Keep in mind, uh, I can give you a variety of different values here. I could give you the percent yield and the actual value and t tell you to calculate the experimental. I can give you percent yield. I probably wouldn't give you to calculate the actual value, but keep in mind there's a couple different ways that we can go through and solve these types of problems. It's not going to be just this straightforward, but there are other variables that I can ask you to solve for. Same rules apply, you just need to know how to calculate those algebraically. So again, keep in mind that accuracy and precision are two very different concepts. You need to make sure that you understand that accuracy is how close you are to the target value, and precision are how close your data points are to each other. And keep in mind that you can have a variety of different forms of accuracy and precision together. Also keep in mind that percent error is used to determine accuracy of a value in an experiment when we compare that to what the value should be. The lower the percent error, the more accurate the experiment is. Again, guys, hopefully that made some good sense to you. We'll talk a little bit more about this in class, but hopefully you can differentiate between accuracy and precision and calculate the percent error of a given set of experimental data. Hope you guys have a great day. We will talk to you next time. Bye-bye, guys.